It's time to pull those belts tight, race fans. The Front Stretch is coming at you. Presented by Joe's Karting and Council Bluffs. Now, here's Dan Taylor and Dirk Houston. Well, good morning to you, race fans, and welcome to the Front Stretch, presented by Joe's Karting and Council Bluffs, online at joeskarting.com. Fast pace, white knuckle racing, just cross the river on 23rd Avenue. Get over to Joe's today. Do yourself right with a little indoor kart racing. It's a great time to do it, because obviously it's getting a little bit chillier outside. I think that this happens to be the perfect time of the year to go do indoor kart racing at Joe's Karting, whether it be the road course six days a week, every day except for Tuesday nights, when they redesign the track in the afternoon, and they do the slick tracks uh, on Tuesday nights. But uh, Joe's Karting, it's, it's the perfect time of the year because you got a little coat on, maybe wear some gloves, but you're going to stay nice, uh, warm, but you're not going to get hot. Uh, I don't know. I do know that they are uh, uh, suspending league racing for the month yep. of December. Yep. So I don't know if they're going back for December just to the first Tuesday of the month for the select track or if they're going to do it every week. That's a good question. We'll have to ask Buddy that. So coming up well, uh, this coming Tuesday night, I'll send him a message and find out. Yeah, check their website. I mean, I'm sure he's got something in the plan for it, you know, and he'll make an announcement somehow or let you know. But uh, I know normally with the league, it's been every Tuesday night for the select mm-hmm. track, and uh, everybody's having a good time. Haven't been any fights or anything yet. I haven't heard any scanner calls <laughs> it, on Tuesday. Give it time. <laughs> give it time. <laughs> but uh, that'll be a, a good time. Go, go over there and, and drive off some of your... Uh, turkey coma that you've had for the last couple days and uh then since you're all tired of turkey for three days just buzz across the street after you race a little bit and have a little liquid adult beverage to wash down a sandwich or some wings over at quaker steak joe's karting.com for more information once again and as always karting with a k we got a big show lined up for you today it's going to be a lot of interviews because we've got a ton of them we got to get through some really late nights in the studios and fun nights out at quaker steak and lube first thing we're going to kick it off infield jen jen Calandrillo. Thank you. Is going to join us formally with NBM Motorsports. When we talked to her a couple of months ago, she was still with NBM Motorsports. Has yet to announce where she's going to be going, but it sounds like she's landed a, a deal with a cup team. So she's going to go step up a series, but she was with NBM Motorsports. And this is kicking off a series, Dirk, that you've been kind of spearheading a little bit. Yeah, and a few of our listeners already met her. We worked with NBM at our uh, Crewman for a Day contest uh, through Jen over at at Iowa Speedway back in July. Mm-hmm. So uh, some people have already met her, and a few other people, Bob and Lori Kroger, have met her. You know, they usually end up garaged right next to David Starr, so yep. they know who Jen is. But uh, Lady Wears a Million friggin' hats yeah i mean she does everything at the racetrack except drive the darn car and there's a lot of women that are in motorsports that are making some big contributions and they're not behind the driver's seat so they don't get a lot of love they get these kind of one-off specials like we're trying to do so we're going to talk to quite a few women throughout motorsports their their roles in in whatever they're doing and jen's going to kick this whole thing off for us then in uh, turn number two, legendary driver throughout the area, Tom Myers is going to swing by. And Ryan Jenkins, I-80 Speedway AMOD track champion, will join us in turn number three. And then in turn number four, we're going to talk about the big news that was uh, that came out earlier this week. Jimmy Johnson making the announcement on social media and then making the media rounds that 2020 will be his final year. We'll talk about that coming up in uh, turn number four. So let's kick this Women in Motorsports series off with uh, a woman that, you know, we talked to her before the interview, but then we sat down and watched her at Iowa Speedway, like you'd mentioned, with MBM Motorsports. And you truly do, I mean, it's an exaggeration to say she wears a million hats, but she literally works on the car, fuels the car, does the communications, does the social media, handles some of the the, the everyday stuff for the team, handles sponsorships. It is darn close to a million hats and is engaged to brian keselowski brad's older brother <laughs> kudos to him and he she's landed, a dog saver he, too. he landed a great one jen uh joining us on the show now infield jen how are you doing this morning jen i'm doing good how are you we're doing great. We appreciate you coming on the show and taking the time out of your busy schedule. Uh, right now, you are, we're just going to call you an employee at MBM Motorsports because do you have an actual title or would it fill up an entire business card if you tried to? <laughs> it would absolutely fill up a business card. <laughs> we're a bunch of hats here. <laughs> but the that's kind of the team, way. The more jobs you got. Yeah, that's kind of the way it goes. It's it, You don't really have an assignment. Maybe you have a job that you need to take care of, but if there's something else that needs to be done, you got to jump in and get it done. Exactly. Yep. Even, even more. Mul- um, even more multitasking with the small teams. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, I handle all the communications uh, for the team. I do all the public relations, social media, uh, 
built and run the website. Um, at the track, I kind of make sure everything and everybody's taken care of, put out the work assignments, and kind of sort of like the unofficial pit coach. So if something goes wrong, they kind of come to me, and I kind of make sure that everybody has what they need on pit road. Um, and then I'm also running fuel during the races and catching cans and throwing cans over the wall. And so I stay busy. <laughs> and fit, I, I would assume. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and this is all for yeah, MBM Motorsports, correct? Yes. Yeah. I'm with, I've been with MBM Motorsports since uh, January this year. Okay. What got you into this whole thing? Were, were you a, a little girl growing up wanting to be involved in racing, or was it princesses and no, ballerinas? Actually, no, not at all. <laughs> um, I, uh, <laughs> I'm originally from Brooklyn, New York, so racing, you know, when I was a kid wasn't that big, and my dad really wasn't into it, but um, I had an ex-boyfriend uh, who was, and, and I started watching it, and I got really involved, and I kind of liked it, and uh, and then it just kind of, you know, I kind of got the bug, so I wanted it. I knew that I wanted to do something in it, but I wasn't sure what, and I was you know, living in Brooklyn, I was like, well, how am I going to get involved in it? So I got on the uh, committee in 2004 to, when they were going to build the track in Staten Island. And I, you know, was on that. And we kind of educated the public about the benefits of having a track on in New York City and, and what it could do for the city and, and all these different things that we did. And um, unfortunately, it came down to like an election year. So they voted it off the island. So my thing was, well, if it's not coming here, I'm going it. And I don't know how, but, you know, I'm going to figure it out. So uh, NASCAR was really cool. Every time we went to Pocono and Doba, they would give us some passes to come to the race. And I said, well, you know, a lot of the people that I met, they're like, well, if you really want to get into this, you got to become a familiar face. Well, how am I going to do that living in New York? And everybody's down there in North Carolina. So I started taking pictures with everyone. And that was kind of my thing. I took a picture with them. And when I met them again, they signed it. And then I gave them a resume with a small picture. So they would rem- remember my face. <laughs> and I did that for like four years and it worked. <laughs> so people started remembering me. And I was like, well, I said, this, this is a good sign. But uh, so I took a leap of faith in 2010, packed up me, my dog and my belongings. And I moved down to North Carolina. Um, hoping that things would work out. And thankfully, um, several months later, it did. Uh, Brian Kozlowski messaged me on Facebook two weeks before the Daytona 500 in 2011. He needed a PR person, and that's exactly what I was looking to do. And uh, my whole Infill Gen kind of brand kind of started happening a few months before that, so that was getting pretty popular pretty quick. And uh, he said, hey, I need a PR person. Everyone seems to know who you are. I think I need your help. And I was like, are you serious? And sure enough, my first day on the job with him at the track, he made the Daytona 500, which turned out to be the best day of my life. Um, it was also the first time I've ever gotten, I was finally able to get to Daytona. So it was um, dream come true. And uh, I've been with him ever since. Um, fast forward eight years later, we're engaged. <laughs> oh. but, um, yeah, eight years later, uh, we're engaged, two dogs, we're good. Um, <laughs> but yeah, is that, is that how the en- racing's all I do now. Is, is that how the enga- but it. Is that how the engagement went? You know, hey, Jen, I need a wife. <laughs> <laughs> No one seems to also be going out. Yeah, no, <laughs> not quite like that. But uh, it was it was pretty funny. Does that um, make yeah, it tough when when you're you're uh, working so closely with your fiance? No, it kind of makes it better, you know, because we work really good really good together. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, it, it, he was actually the crew chief here at MBM up until a couple up until about a week ago. So that was good. But um, but yeah, no, we've I've worked with him. I've worked at Premium Motorsports, and he worked over there um, a couple of years ago. And, and you know, so we've worked together. We've worked apart, but you know, we're still all in this you know we're all in this together everybody knows everybody so yeah it's good. i mean you you do see a lot of that uh husband and wife stuff in nascar maybe more than probably any other sports type situation just because you, yeah. nascar is so unique well you know what it, it's probably better off that way because there's a lot of people and a lot of crew guys that i know that you know they go through divorces and they they don't it doesn't work out because the spouse you know hardly ever sees them um at least i see brian at the track whether we work together or not you know Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, so, the the dedicated hours. I mean, if you're going to succeed in this yeah. sport, it's not a 60 or an 80 hour work no. week. It's, yeah, 80 is about right. Yeah, no, we it's, don't it's not 40. <laughs> no, we don't punch a clock at all. And, you know, sometimes called like last night, the guys were here till 1030. Last week, they were there till like two in the morning, you know, just trying to get everything done. Well, with and- Daytona, we had a quick turnaround. We had to be back on the road. We had to be in Daytona on Tuesday. So we got home from what was it, Chicago, Saturday night, Sunday morning. And so it was it was a long couple of days to get everything turned around. Well, and especially, again, with the smaller teams, like, like you're working with four different teams, but on the smaller budget, you're not flying uh, a crew in with, on a Learjet and then flying them home after the race. Yeah. I, I, I've noticed, you know, we're friends now on Facebook, and you do a lot of stuff uh, mm-hmm. via the 15-passenger van. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. We drive pretty much everywhere. We do get some flights, some you know, sometimes, but um, for the most part, we do drive. Uh, it's just it's just cheaper that way. And you know, when you don't have a you got a bunch of teams, we don't have a lot of sponsorships. So you know, you got to do what you got to do. Well, yeah, Phoenix and, uh, and Phoenix, Vegas, and uh, California are obviously air flights, but uh, yeah. 
Um, well, um, we actually had some of the guys drove out that way with the vans and stuff, and uh, some of us flew. Hmm. But then once we got out to Vegas, we did drive from Vegas to Phoenix. And then after Phoenix, we went back to Vegas to work. We had a shop out there that we, uh, one of our drivers, Stan Mullis, he has a, a shop out there. So we worked at his shop, and then we drove to California. And then some of the guys drove the vans back, and then some of us flew back. Hmm. But, yeah. So, of all uh, the hats that you wear for MBM Motorsports, what's your favorite one? Probably running fuel. It's it's just good really? adrenaline rush. And, yeah, I love doing that. <laughs> is it because it's <laughs> such a crazy but you got to get that filled up and get back there just in case there's a quick caution yeah 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 i i mean i just i love doing you know everything what i everything that i do i feel kind of blessed that um I, I'm, i when i lived in staten island and i said i wanted to get into this i kind of thought the pr rep but i'm doing things now that i never even dreamed of and mm-hmm. you know just to physically be able to do something something like that it's like that's pretty cool you know that i'm, I'm just physically able to do it and so i'm I'm not complaining at all. (laughs) Well, and you're part of the product that's on the track at that point. You know, it's not like you're sitting back there and, you know, hey, you want to talk to the driver an hour after the race? You know, no, you're you're doing it. Yeah. Yep. Yep. How many? The uh, other cool thing is I I get, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. I I had a dumb question. (laughs) (laughs) It's okay. He does that a lot. (laughs) (laughs) But um, what's really cool is like I get to share all that, everything that I do with like fans through my social media and stuff. And then I have my whole infield gen fan sponsorship program where fans can kind of become sponsors, at, you know, at an affordable rate. And, you know, they could kind of come down and see exactly what we do and kind of get a better taste of it. And, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty cool to kind of get to meet different people of all walks of life and all different places. And they get to, you know, see what we do up close and personal. So no, it's I, a lot of fun. What's your but, favorite uh, racetrack on the circuit? Or do you have yeah. one? Oh, yeah, Daytona, hands yeah. down. Yeah. There's is it the – is... I mean – we we can have good days at racetracks, but nothing will come close to what the day my day at Daytona in 2011. So yeah, that's definitely my favorite one. Yeah, and see, I'm just the opposite. I'm a short track guy. I love going to Richmond, which is just you know a little mm-hmm. smaller than what Iowa Speedway is. But I like the short yeah. track stuff. I think the racing is so much better. I'm just not that restrictor plate follow the leader super speedway demolition derby guy. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Uh, we've been talking with, uh, infield Jen. Is there an Instagram, a Twitter account or Facebook they can follow to kind of keep uh, a track with you? All of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the answer is yes. <laughs> if you just, you can Google infield Jen and everything pops up. So, yep. And I got my website infieldgen.com. Everything. I put all the race results out every week and, um, like I said, people could check out the fan sponsorship packages that I have and kind of sign up if they want to. Um, I have a number on there they could call if they want to talk to me directly about it. So, you know, I'm pretty accessible. Wow, you really put it out there. Oh, yeah. It can be <laughs> risky these kind of days, but I suppose a girl that can handle a, a 80-gallon fuel jug's not got a lot to worry about. <laughs> Yeah, I can handle it. And, and, Bri- and Brian Kozlowski yeah, keeping track just, of her, too. That's yeah. <laughs> not, too many, not too many people want to mess with Brian. Well, I'm, no, I'm kind of worried about Brian here. <laughs> <laughs> no, <Nah>, he's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, best of luck with the uh, the engagement. Have you guys set a date yet? Thank you. No, we, we got engaged in 2016, still haven't set a date. <laughs> <laughs> no rush, <laughs> like, right? Well, yeah, we kind of were talking. I was like, hmm, let's see. We spent a lot of money on a wedding, or do we buy a house? So we bought a house. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nice there you January. go. Well, and it, we're good. We got the house, the dogs. We're good. Practicality. I suppose the, uh, yep. the good news with uh, both of you being in the racing world, it really eliminates nine months out of the year that you can get married. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you, exactly. You've got a very short window, so you don't have a lot of deciding to do there. Well, they can also take exactly. 10 minutes on one of the trips to Vegas and get it done. <laughs> yeah. So that's funny. So when we were going to Vegas this, this year here, I, we were packing, and I just looked at him and was like, so, i got to pack anything white? And he's like, huh? And he took him a couple of minutes, but he caught on. He's like, oh, uh, uh. I was like, just, we're good, we're good, relax. <laughs> <laughs> it was really funny. <laughs> that would have been something but, you should have videoed. Wonder. That would have gone viral. <laughs> That was good. He said no because I didn't really own anything white. Everything's black, and all my clothes are black for, for the track. So that wouldn't have worked out very good anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that I'm sure there's a Victoria's Secret story. You could have bought something white down in Vegas. So <laughs> yeah, maybe I don't have time to go look though. We were at the track, and maybe you, maybe you could have got married by an Elvis. Who knows? There you go. Oh boy, no, no, that's not my style. <laughs> But We're talking with uh, Infield so. Jen. Make sure to follow right. her on Facebook, Instagram, and t- Twitter. Uh, Jen, thanks so much for your time. Can't wait to see you over at Iowa Speedway. And uh, take care and best of luck with the uh, wedding and the, and the engagement and that stuff. <laughs> Thank you. Look forward to it. Love talking to you. It's always, it's always kind of fun to talk to somebody from Brooklyn because I love hearing the accent. <laughs> well, 
thank you. Do you guys ever do you ever Thanks listen to like us, do you ever listen to those Midwesterners and you're like that's a weird accent yeah. they've got. I can't understand him. <laughs> well, yeah, I talk to um like if I ever tried talking to Ward Burton, it's like we just look at each other like yeah, you know. <laughs> we well, need everyone... translators for each other. <laughs> oh, I was up in New Hampshire one time working on pit road. We were doing the modified race before the truck race up there, and uh, mm-hmm. of course all them New Englanders up there on pit road and. Uh, I can't remember who was calling the race. It was one of the Cal- Carolina guys. And uh, so it's like you're talking, like you say, you talk to Ward Burton type deal. And I was yeah. next to a guy, and he was trying to call out that car 44 was out of the race. And he was saying, mm-hmm. ha, 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 ha. <laughs> And they finally <laughs> hollered down to me because I was in the next pit stall. Dirk, go over and see what he's trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's. It's funny. Jen, thanks uh, again for so much for your time. Look forward to meeting you over at uh, Iowa, and be sure to put our, our winners to work. Absolutely. Will do. All Look right. Thanks a lot. you guys, too. Have All a right. Good. Thanks, Jen. Thanks for having me on. Uh-huh. Bye. Bye. Once again, that was Jen. Infield Jen, she's she's got one of those Italian last names that I'm just not – I'm just going to stay away from it. Uh, and I'm really kind of, af- I'm kind of afraid that if I get it really wrong, she's <laughs> – She's going to hear it and then take care of me over at Iowa. Well, so you say Italian, but the R I L L O is Hispanic. I think. Yeah. So it, it's hard telling what she's got, but she got jet black hair and a whole bunch of it. Uh, make sure to uh, to follow Jen. Great, uh, uh, kind of a great inspiration and, and somebody that's uh, making headrows in a male dominated world. So great to talk to her. We're going to take a break. We'll be back on the front stretch. Red Oak Fabrication is excited to announce they're expanding their powder coating business, which means quicker turnaround times at the same great price. Get all the benefits of a powder coated chassis for just $275 for a bare frame. Ask Jordan about special pricing for large and small projects today. Email jordanf at redoakfabrication.com. Located at the intersection of Highway 34 and 48 in Red Oak, Iowa, or at redoakfabrication.com. A beautiful and durable service is just down the road. Every race car driver has run into the same problem. It's well past normal parts store closing hours, but you need that one to finish your car. The guys who brought you white knuckle racing by the river bring you Joe's Karting Racing Parts and Tire Store. Open until 10 p.m. Monday to Thursday and open until 11 p.m. on Friday and Saturday. A parts store that fits your after-hours schedule and you can turn a few laps at Joe's Karting while you're waiting for your part to get pulled from their warehouse. Joe'sKarting.com for more information. We're hooked up in turn two and still showing the green flag on the front stretch. We're back to the front stretch. Just about ready to do another Red Oak Fabrication interview. It's starting to get a little bit chilly out there as the uh, summer months have obviously gone uh, by the wayside. And uh, Red Oak Fabrication can not only take care of you in the powder coating department, but they can also take care of you in the Carhartt department. Incredibly warm uh, winter wear as well as fashionable too. So while you can be in the uh, deer stand or the duck blind, you can also be out walking about uh, at, uh, oh, I don't know, football games or uh, out and about in the city and uh, and look a little bit more fashionable. Like Tom's got a nice little uh, flannel jacket on right now. Tom Myers joining us on the show. How you doing, sir? I'm good. It's a good uh, good seasonal shirt you've got on there. Yeah, it's uh, Duluth Trading, man. They, they okay. got some really good clothes. I love their clothes. Boy, I tell you, I've always wanted to go out there because I like their marketing ads. I think they're really good, but I've seen their price tags. Well, and I'm surprised because you own a race car. I didn't know you had any money left over. Well, the, <laughs> he traded them two tires. Oh. <laughs> well, part of, the, part of the appeal is they have a no-ball guarantee. Oh. So if you get a little tear in your pants or you just plain don't like them, you just take them back in a new pair. No kidding. Mm-hmm. Have you ever been in a fight with a bear since wearing them? No, I, you know, I haven't yet, but I'm, okay. I'm waiting for that day. I've got, you know, I'm packing and everything, mm-hmm. so... <laughs> Thanks for telling me now. I'm going to make sure I don't make fun of you. <laughs> it's always been a life goal of mine to wrestle with a tiger. I don't know if it's ever going to happen, but I want to try it just I don't, once. I don't think you're going to win that fight. I don't, well, I don't, I don't expect you either. I just, uh, I'll, I'll, if I get out of that with, with my life, then it'll be a good day. Yeah. But I just think that wrestling with a tiger would be a lot like kind of playing with a cat, just a much oh, larger yeah. scale. Just playful banter. That's, right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're not talking like full-on fighting here because I'd, I'd have to kill it. I mean, <laughs> let's just face it. Tiger doesn't stand a chance against a Dan Taylor. Uh, Tom Myers joining us on the show. Legend throughout the area. Been racing uh, for quite a few years and uh, raced quite a, bit, quite a few things. Right now you're in the number seven hobby stock. Finished second in the points at Adams County Speedway. Uh, tough contender in front of you. Uh, a very strong driver in Luke Ramsey. But uh, second place on the year, that's nothing to feel bad about. Now we had a pretty good season. Uh, two wins at Corning, one win at I-80. We finished third in points at I-80 this year. 
Uh, there was some attrition early on out there. So, uh, but, you know, all in all, it was a pretty good season. And uh, we had one DNF at Corning, and that kind of put me way behind Luke. So we didn't have a chance for the, the win. But second was good. Yeah, he's, uh, he's such an in- incredibly consistent driver. You know he's going to find his way to the front, and he very rarely has problems. Yeah, he. I don't know if it's just luck or if uh, if he's just changing parts every other week or what, but <laughs> <laughs> make up a brand new car every other week. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, he, but yeah, he he does a good job. You know, he's got that car. He's so comfortable in it. You know, he knows exactly what's going to happen every yeah. time he throws it in the corner. And uh, it took us a couple years to really figure this jet car out, but. Uh, We've got it dialed in pretty good, and it, it, it's consistent and fast now. My, my worst finish in the last 15 races was fourth place. Wow, that's nice. Uh, that's got to feel good because you, you probably spent a heck of a lot of time, like you said, dialing that chassis in, and, and some frustrated nights and probably some broken knuckles. Oh, of course, yeah. I mean, I mean <laughs> it's pushing like a dump truck, so we changed some more stuff, and then I was too loose, and, you know, it just – you know how it goes. It, <clears throat> you, you can't just get it perfect, and then finally, when we do get it perfect, then we we get a good run going on. So yeah, and then the field changes, or the weather changes, and the track change, conditions change, and, and now you're in for another loop. Right. Yeah. We'll show up next year in the car will be junk. I'll start yeah. all over. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to be like all these other guys? Now that you got it dialed in, you're going to go ahead and sell it and go get a new one? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't no. do that. <laughs> I ride it out until she gets banned or yeah. Uh, yeah. I feel like something better came along. Talk about your history in the sport. Uh, I've always seen you in the hobby stocks. What else have you driven? Where else have you raced? I I had a pro street, was what Corning called them for a while. I had one for its season, but I didn't have the money to, you know, put new tires on it or anything. So we just went out and rode around, averaged, you know, like 10th place or so. But we, we could never get that car to work right, so I got rid of it. And... As far as hobby stock, you know, I like to race cheap. I'd, I'd love to move up to stock cars or something, but, you know, I'm, I'd have to double my budget, and right. I, can't, I can't do that. So yeah, I have just as much fun in a hobby stock as I would, you know, we're not going that much slower than the stock cars. Right. Maybe ha- half a second a lap. Yeah. Stock cars, one of my favorite classes. Hobby stocks are one of my other favorite classes. I think those are kind of the two, I don't know if I want to call them pure classes left. But guys just seem to go race there and have a lot of fun, and the cubic dollar doesn't seem to come into play as much in that class as it can in the other classes. Yeah, in a stock car, you gotta you know throw an eight or twelve thousand dollar engine at it, and you're 125 bucks a tire. Yeah. And you know I spend 50 bucks on a tire, run it two nights, sell it for 20 bucks, and buy a crate engine. A crate engine lasts me three seasons. You know, so for me it's just uh, so much cheaper to run a hobby stock. Yeah. Now, you've been behind the behind the wheel in the hobby stock for a lot of years. I mean, that I know of, and maybe more that you haven't talked about yet. But <laughs> 19, uh, 19 years. Huh? Okay. So, uh, what was it about? Twenty ten, somewhere in there, where they came with the uh, crate motor option. Yeah, I think so. About ten and years I, ago. And I was one of those guys, you know. Oh, I'll never switch from an open engine. You know, I can beat these crates with my stuff, and I build my own engines and. And then I, I hurt both my engines in one weekend, <laughs> destroyed one of them and burn up the, you know, and, and I'm like, what am I going to do? Am I going to build another open or am I just going to try the crate? Yeah. So I went ahead and bought a crate and then I'm like, second place, second place. But I'm like, well, well why didn't I do this years ago? I mean, <laughs> stubborn, just stubborn ass as well, yeah. you know. Yeah. I mean, it, from what I remember when they first came out, I think the crate motor was then by the time you bought the carburetor and the whole the whole shebang, you were probably in it for about six grand. Is that pretty close? Yeah, well, because you have to change gears and uh, different flywheel. I mean, there were some things you had to change, of course. But yeah, probably fifty-five. Well, you might have gears sitting around from another track or something that you can use, you know. But if you're uh, a one-track guy or just running the the big fast tracks, yeah, you're going to have to definitely re-gear it because well, they chip those sixty-two hundred. Sixty-two, like yeah. Yep. So, obviously, uh, most of the guys I know from the open motor days were 
I know when I was helping Jimmy Nichols, the cars were turning 68, 6900. So. All right, yeah, I was running a 583 at Corning, turned in about 7,000. Uh, talking with Tom Myers, driver of the number seven a hobby sock throughout the area. You talked about your run at Adams County Speedway coming up second. Third place at uh, I-80 Speedway. Did you race weekly anywhere else or just hit or miss kind of wherever you wanted to run? No, actually, those are the only two tracks we raced at this year. We uh, The engine, about eight races to go. The engine, uh, we I think we broke a piston ring or something. and. Mm. Uh, there was, we were tapped out, no money for an engine or anything, so I borrowed one from my brother to finish the season out. And uh, then between rainouts and, uh, <clears throat> I mean, we didn't even get to go to the Corn Oscar Classic because uh, we had to cater uh, some food to some people that oh. night. So I kind of want to know what the, what's some food to some people. <laughs> what's, it feels like there's a story there. <laughs> no, no, we just the restaurant, you know, business. Oh. Business has to come before the the play, yeah. because the you know the business has to pay for it. So right, right. What business do you own? We have Tom and Tiff's Family Restaurant in, oh. in Glenwood. Where's it? Oh, in Glenwood. Yep, and we've been there for about 16, 17 years. We're at Glenwood. Uh, south end, down by the Pizza Hut. Okay, all right. I uh, get through there every once in a while. Yeah, Not right, near enough. Right beside the Firestone. Okay, I'll have to go in there sometime. What's your favorite thing on the menu? My favorite thing? Yeah, all of it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's all really good. Of course, you know, we have uh, fresh ground hand patted hamburgers. Uh, we have broaster chicken. Our breakfast is a huge hit. Everybody says we have the best breakfast anywhere. Yeah. Even, you know, truckers will be like, hey, you got the best biscuits and gravy I've had coast to coast. Hmm. I love breakfast. Yeah. I mean, you cannot, literally, you can't have a bad day when it starts with pancake and bacon. Oh, you know, you'll have to ask Buddy Ray Jones. Buddy Ray, come down. I talked him into coming down and trying breakfast. Now yeah. he's down there every weekend. Are you the reason why he's got that belly? Yeah. He looks like he's seven months pregnant. Yeah, he comes down, he's like, I want three <laughs> orders of bacon. Maybe you, next time go, Dan Taylor says you get one. And my wife. <laughs> he can't fit into that sport mod anymore. My wife gives him a pitcher of pop. He gets a whole pitcher for himself. For he's breakfast? Re- she just, no, he just puts oh. a straw in it, yeah. <laughs> You're, help, you're enabling him. <laughs> but uh, in, in Glenwood, uh, look you guys up on Facebook. Uh, you guys have a Facebook page for it, or uh, yeah. Google's yeah. the best way? Yeah, we're on Facebook. All right. Uh, and, and you said you'd like to get into the stock cars, but uh, that's going to take a little bit of uh, sponsorship and maybe some luck. But uh, thanks some of the sponsors that are helping you get out to the track already. Well, of course, we have Tom and Tiff's Family Restaurant. I want to you know, thank our kids and our grandbabies. And my crew chief, Matt, and his wife, Rachel, and their new baby, Maddie. Meyer Snow Removal, that's another business of ours. Uh, you know, we have a... Because running a restaurant's not busy enough. Well, you know, we, <laughs> we got six trucks and a whole slew of accounts. You know, we yeah. keep busy in the winter, too, yeah. when we're not racing. So, the Jet Racing, you know, they make a great chassis. I, I love this Jet car. I've had a lot. I've built my own. You know, I built a couple of my own. And they were good cars, but, you know, this jet car is it's well built. And uh, the tech support, you know, Johnny and the guys, anything you need, they're right there for you. Yeah. Demon decals. <clears throat> he makes a great rap. And, of course, you know, that contest it was pretty fun. Did you win that? I did. Did you? Yeah, I got See, the free rap. That was awesome. That's a, that's a nice uh, budget saver. Oh, yeah. That's like six seventy five right off the top. Wow. Curse trucking. He's going to throw me some extra money to help with an engine, too, because, you know, he's just that kind of guy. Oh, that's awesome. Adams County Speedway and the fair board, you know, uh, if it weren't for them, we wouldn't be racing down there, obviously. They've done a heck of a job with that track over the last three years. Yeah. They have they, really stepped their game up. They stumbled a little bit one year. Uh, I mean, uh, but, you know, that's to be expected. There was some, some appointed management changes and all that stuff. But, you know, they, they've come back around, and this, this year they had great car counts every night compared to what it has been, which is nice, you know, because that, that's what you need to, for the track to survive. Yeah. Then we have uh, Volcanic Peppers. They're out of Bellevue. They have tons of hot sauces and spices, really good stuff. They're a good spot. They've been a good sponsor for a couple of years now. Yeah. And, you Do know, you serve their stuff at the restaurant? I got, uh, yeah, we, they gave us some to serve, and uh, there's a few that are just super good. Yeah, I love peppers and, and, uh, and salsas and stuff like that. They're, they're online, too. You can check them out, okay. volcanicpeppers.com. Okay, I'll check them out. But they're right in Bellevue. They're selling their stuff out of high vs and stuff, too, but they, as well as their storefront. Yeah. But yeah, I love that kind of stuff, too. They get, but they have all kinds of 
really good sauces and, and rubs and spices. I think that's about it for my sponsors. Well, you, you were the first one, and one of the few that started off by thanking the family. <laughs> and this is something that I, I do love about this sport because it, it's obviously a family sport. It's, it's not just you turning the wrenches and, and racing the car, but your kids are probably down in there. The wife's probably helping out here and there with doing some things. So it's very much a family sport and, uh, and, and helps bring the family together once a week. Well, yeah, when I, when I got started, it was uh, my wife's brother, Ray, Ray Knipe. Mm-hmm. And I went and watched him race. I'm like, man, I got to get me one of these, you know, because I actually went to school to fix cars and wound up in a restaurant. (laughs) (laughs) You know how that goes. Yeah. So I got a car. I found a car and I started going racing. Yeah. And and then when Corning started that very next year, right after I started. So me and Ray and Rick Pitzer, you know, he's from Glenwood, too. We all just went down there and there there was five of us that started it. And by the end of the year, we had over 20 cars. And a couple of years later, we had about 45 cars showing up every wow. night. And you were lucky. I mean, you you were lucky to make it through the heat race and not have to run a B. Yeah. Without getting wrecked or. Right. You know, it, it was rough back then. <laughs> it was really rough. You get 45 cars out there, it's going to be a little bit of a, a beating and banging. Yeah. It's not like now where you can make it through a heat race, um, usually without getting wrecked. Yeah. But back then, it was. Man, if you start any worse than uh, front row, you, you look out because you might get be getting hit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's uh, yeah. It's uh, there's a couple of classes like that that are just frustrating because it it seems like there's some guys that maybe need to go backwards in a class and, and learn how to hold their line <laughs> a little bit. But. Oh, there was yeah, there was one night. I one year I can't remember what year it was, but we we were on the trailer twelve nights. Oh. We couldn't keep up finding suspension parts. Yeah. Because they didn't have the aftermarket suspension parts back then. Yeah. We had to go find them, you know, and strip them off junk car- out of the junkyard. Yeah. And it was just stupid stuff. Maybe some of it was my fault, but, I mean, it just happened, and I was on the trailer 12 nights. It was it was really frustrating. Did you get to go race uh, Sunset? Uh, that was the first year I started racing, and I went to the Cornhusker Classic, their very last race ever. Yeah. And um, that was kind of a fun race. I was running third the entire race, and we hit the white flag, and then a guy ran over me oh. coming out of uh, turn four, and I wound up like 12th or something uh. by the time I straightened the car out. Yeah, just used you up a little bit? Oh, yeah. yeah. He body slammed me and turned me toward the wall, and I had to collect it before I would hit the wall. Used you up a lot bit then, huh? Yeah. Uh, all right, so we talked about your 2019 season, uh, enjoyed your run. The plans for 2020, are you going to go back to Adams County for another season? Oh, of course, yeah. We'll be back at Corning. Interesting, my kid, uh, one of my kids, he's, he's my middle child, but he, he just got a car from my brother, Yeah. and uh, he's going to put it together and come out and race, and I guess his goal is to beat me in points. <laughs> Good so. luck. Yeah. <laughs> but he showed, I let him drive one of my cars a few times, and he, he actually showed some natural talent. Yeah. He, he was smooth, and uh, he impressed some uh, veteran drivers. Yeah. So. Well, good. Good deal. Uh, what's his name? Derek. Derek. All right. We'll keep an eye out for uh, Derek. What's he going to race? Uh, probably the 7D or the 7M? I have no idea. He hasn't told me what his number is. So. Hmm. <laughs> Does that make you worried a little bit? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> He's not taking my number. But <laughs> Tom Myers has uh, been joining us on the show. Came uh, runner-up in the points at Adams County Speedway. Tom, do love having you on the show. Really appreciate it. I always enjoyed watching your race when I was over in that area. So uh, congratulations on the second place, and hopefully you can make it one better next year. Yeah, hopefully we get the championship. We've been working on it, working on it. You know how many times I've been the bridesmaid? It's, uh, <laughs> that's getting frustrating, too. I bet. I bet. <laughs> All right. Uh, best of luck in 2020, and uh, have a great offseason. Thank you. We're going to take a break. We'll be back on the front stretch. We all have that coworker that runs their mouth off at how great they are. They shot a five under par, 95 mile an hour fastball, bench press 375, brah. Wouldn't you love to shut them up by schooling them at Joe's Karting? Council Bluffs premier indoor karting track, professionally designed so each corner is your opportunity to embarrass your coworker. Call Buddy for your next company outing at 712-256-5278. Joe's Karting, white knuckle racing just across the river on 23 Avenue next to AMC 17. If you love wings, if you love rings, and all kinds of other tempting things, great times, great food, get too quick to stay canoe. 
Quaker Steak and Lube is the official watering hole of the front stretch and the home of Mav TV, featuring action from the Lucas Oil Late Model Series. Great times, great food. Get to Quaker Steak and Lube. Located on Mid America Drive in Council Bluffs. Feather the break and get back to the gas. Dan and Dirk are headed into turn three on the front stretch. Welcome back into the front stretch. Heading into turn number three, and it's time for another Red Oak Fabrication interview. It's getting a little bit chilly out there, and if you are of, like, many throughout the Midwest and you enjoy yourself uh, sitting in a duck blind or maybe on top of a deer tree stand, uh, you're going to want to be nice and warm, and there is no better hunting gear than Carhartt, and Red Oak Fabrication has a great Carhartt store available down in Red Oak, Iowa. Find out more at redoakfabrication.com slash Carhartt. By the way, you also look fashionable while sitting at the racetrack sporting some brand new Carhartt gear. RedOakFabrication.com slash Carhartt. Do you, have, do you own any Carhartt, Ryan? No, I'm good. We'll make, a cha- we'll make that change. Yeah, that's good. It's, I some good, it's good thick stuff. I, I've got a couple of stuff that I always – the only thing I use it for is when I snow blow my driveway, but I don't get out in the cold yeah, very much. Yeah, I, I stay inside in the winter. Yeah. Do, does uh, does uh, Randy and, and, and Rindy uh, – uh, uh, Chris and Randy, do they uh, do they heat the Precise Racing products yeah, shop nice. very well? Yeah, or do else they? I quit. So. <laughs> Are you a, co- a warm weather kind of a guy? Yeah, you don't yep. deal well with the cold? Yeah, I like that. He doesn't have any insulation on him, Dan. Yeah, Come on. That's true. <laughs> I used to be, when I was younger, it, the cold never bothered me. But as I get older and older, it's just gotten slowly worse and worse. I think it has something to do with the uh, retreating hairline that I've got going on. It's less insulation on top. Yeah. You'll get, well. That's probably it. Yeah. <laughs> so, you hey, don't think it has to do with being a pansy? It might be. I don't know. <laughs> now that you're well, that's going to wrap it up with our Ryan racing. Jenkins interview. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, Ryan Jenkins joining us on the uh, front stretch now and uh, track champion at IED Speedway for the Modifieds, also former Sport Mod track champion at IED Speedway. Uh, that was a big year for you, the year that you won the track championship at IED Speedway for your Sport Mods because you also won the NASA, National NASCAR Sport Mod track championship, which got you a, a big UNOH deal. I think you got a scholarship to there and uh, a bunch of prize money in that. But uh, coming back, you've moved up into the modifieds. I think this is your second year. Yeah, it's my second full year. Yeah. So, uh, and already picking up a track championship. Yeah, I didn't really plan on it. I just kind of, you know, hit ID when I could, and then we ended up winning the first couple nights, and here we are. The luxury of talking to Dirk, Dan and Dirk. That's, oh, yeah. That's what that track championship gets you. It's a great time. <laughs> Hell of a year for you. Four wins on the year, nine top fives, 12 top tens in 12 features. Never finished that side of the top ten. That's a big testament. Yeah, um, just made sure we finished every race, and we were there every time. Um, always there. I felt like we got behind in July and August. I had the eight ball in the car, and then we got back going when it counted. So, You kind of played around in a sprint car just a little bit this year, kind of feeling it out a little bit do you think that kind of distracted you a little bit from the game or no i think it made me a better driver actually really? just getting into that and then getting back in the modified things were slow motion so yeah um it's a different animal but i think i can get the hang of it yeah and, and is that something you're going to want to do a little bit more often as the years go on yeah i think next year we'll do a lot more of that um yeah. we're moving the car into our shop and so i'll be able to work on it more and uh see when we can race it more and that's kind of a sorry go ahead Dirk. I was going to say, what are you doing now? I know, you know, through high school and through the early part of your racing career, you were big into swimming, which is a, a super good exercise for aerobics and stuff like that. Now that you're not doing any competitive swimming, what do you do to stay in shape? Um, I sit on my couch and play some eye racing and then <laughs> uh, go to bed earlier. So. Oh, okay. So the Carl Edwards routine then, huh? Back when I first started racing, I got beat by Jared West, and he gets out of the car, and he weighs like 250 pounds. I was yeah. like, yeah, I don't think I need to stay in shape. So. <laughs> Jared's never been a model athlete. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's okay. Dar- Jared's taken plenty of digs at me throughout the year, so I can take one or two at him Yeah. because uh, he can't catch me. Yeah. Uh, but that's all right. Uh, but he's fast in the car, which is where he wants to be fast. Good year for you, and I think one of your big highlights was winning one of the stages of the Charlie Clark this year. Yeah, that was a uh, huge kind of fell in and got lucky in that deal and uh, beat some really fast cars and um, yeah, it was a really good time and I wanted that win bad. I threw it down my leg many times, so <laughs> I'm glad I got it. You're, you're absolutely right. You couldn't say it any better. You've uh, you stepped on it. You threw it down your leg. You coughed it up. Whatever you want to say it, but uh, you know, there's in order to get experience, being in one of these veteran experienced drivers, you got to make the mistakes. And, and at the Charlie Clark, you've made a couple of them and you capitalized off the ones you didn't. 
yeah, I just uh, kind of get down on myself on it and just learn from your mistakes and just keep moving forward. Um, I still make mistakes every night. Consistency is the biggest thing, and the modifieds can be incredibly difficult to race in. I think that, you know, with the sport mods, it may sound like I'm talking bad about it, but I'm definitely not. I think in the sport mods, you've got five or six drivers that are winnable drivers. The rest are kind of field fillers, and some of them are kind of squirrels in the back. Your modifieds, I think your top 10, top 12 could win a race, and I don't think there's field fillers, even though there's guys that are running around in the back. Yeah, sport mods is a beginner's class, um, and the guys that are good, they're they've been doing it for a long time, or they got a lot of help. But the modified class, it's it's a lot of veterans, a lot of guys that have been doing it for their whole lives, and a lot longer than I have. So it's really tough at times, and you got to remind yourself that um, there's guys with a lot more laps than you. So it's still a learning curve, and I think I can get better as time goes on. It's just time will tell. And this is kind of something you and your dad do a lot, working together with uh, the race operation, and, and he helps you a lot in the pits. And moving to the modified added a whole new level of dimension of complication. Yeah, it's a huge learning curve for both of us, um, just learning how uh, we're down to the 16th of an inch on every measurement on the car and stuff like that. It just matters so much, and you can get off with one change, and it'll screw up your whole night from a first-place car to a fifth-place car. So, in, in one minor change, you can't believe how much slower you were. Yeah, it's it's insane. So. Yeah, and you've got a lot of veterans you talked about. Is there anybody in the pits the last two years that you've kind of leaned on to help you with the right kind of changes? Yeah, um, Andy Eckrich has been a huge help to our program um, on the setup side, and I think one of my biggest driver coaches has been Dylan Smith. He's helped me out a lot, and he watches me as much as he can and tells me what I did wrong every time. He'll call me and <laughs> explain to me. Never tell me a yeah. good job, but he'll tell me what I did wrong. So. <laughs> That's a good coach, though. Yeah, it's he's been really helpful, so I'm glad to have him there. Yeah, uh, and, and he's kind of wound down his career just a little bit. He's, he's taken on the dad role a little bit more. He's kind of being a little bit more of a, a family man, which more power to him. But uh, we we're seeing the 95 out less and less. Yeah, but when he's out there, he smokes. You know. Yeah. You know when he's out yeah. there because he's still that damn good. Yeah. Uh, what other big races you won this year? I know you went out and raced at Eagle a couple of times in the sprint cars, but where else did you race weekly at? Well, I just kind of ventured around. We went to Boone at the end of the year, and I was able to qualify for the Super Nationals. Um, that was kind of a big deal to me. Other than that, it's just been so much rain this year. We've yeah. hardly got to go anywhere, and I've, school's kind of put me behind this year, so... I know you went out to Crawford County a couple of times, uh, enjoyed the track, wish you could have got out there more often. Yeah, um, we went out there, I think we got out there two times this year. One time we had to start in the back and we got up to the front and the second time it rained out. So yeah, I like that place. Um, we did some of that Midwest tour they had and we went to Stewart and uh, Harlan, Denison, and I-80 to finish it off. So yeah. We did some of that and um, just trying to go off to different racetracks and learn. That's a lot, and I, I think that's a big thing for somebody that's trying to learn is trying different tracks, not necessarily racing more throughout the week. Uh, I don't know if it'll do you a lot more good to race I-80 three times a week as opposed to racing three different tracks because you pick up tendencies at these different tracks that you could try at yeah. various tracks. Yeah, like we went to Marshalltown, and um, we were just absolutely terrible there, but we learned a lot. Mm -hmm. um, last year at Eagle, I was terrible. I'd say this year I got a lot better and can run, hang with the top two of those guys, but... A lot of luck goes into that place, so um, just going to different places and learning more. Do you learn? Do you personally learn more when you're terrible or when you win? Oh, it, you take notes off of everything. Yeah. Um, I'd say when I'm more terrible, but sometimes you get so far behind on the eight ball and the setup of the car, it's you don't know if it's you or the car. So yeah. You kind of forget about it sometimes too, you know. Uh, what kind of chassis are you run? You're you're a Harris, right? No, we're in a Rage chassis. Oh, that's Rage. Uh, sorry. Um, do you have, I know you run uh, crate motor stuff, do you have any desire or, or maybe an inkling to go ahead and try and run an open motor? Um, yeah, if I had a good sponsor to step up and um, <laughs> okay. pay for USMTS stuff, yeah, I'd definitely love to do it. Dirk's but, got a bunch of monies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, where, where, where he's talking about hundreds, my sponsorship would have a lot less zeros than that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You'd like to go USMTS though? Yeah, I just think it's a huge commitment, and you got to oh, do yeah. it all year. Because those guys do it, I mean, four times a week, and yeah, you just—it's a huge commitment. They're big. I mean, they're a big-time professional operation. That you know, yeah. I, I think you and your dad might strangle yourself, strangle yeah. each other if you guys went on tour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. And he's got the shop he's got to run, so he wouldn't be able to help you out much. Yeah. We'd have to hire a guy t- to that point. I mean, yeah. most of those guys have hired guys or guys that have been helping forever and don't have jobs anymore. So. Yeah. Big pie in the sky, though, you'd like to do that. Would you like to do a late model racing at all? Yeah, if I had the chance. You know, yeah. really anything with tires and wheels on it, I'd love yeah. to do it. Did you get over on the car very hard this year? What's that? Roll it over at all this year? Bad no, accident? No. Kept it pretty clean? Yeah, luckily. For yeah. once. You talked about maybe going more into the modifieds or the uh, sprint cars next year. Are you still planning on racing full-time modifieds next year? Yeah, still full-time modifieds and doing that deal. Just playing around with the sprint car a little bit more, though. So. Anything else on the schedule? Any uh, No big races? You're not going to go south? The duel in the desert or go to St. Louis for the uh, modified race indoors? No, not this year. Not this year. Not this year. Maybe next year? Yeah, I think next year I'll go to Vegas and do that yeah. deal. So. Good deal. All right. Uh, make sure to thank the sponsors that are helping you guys uh, get up and down the road and run this operation. Yeah, there's a lot of people that help us. CNH Construction, Gossler Farms, um, Precision Performance, Bill Stein Shocks, Benson Body and Paint, Rage Chassis, Pilots Photography, Precise Racing Products, Hoosier Tire Great Plains, Dynamic Drive Lines, Weir's Machine, Quality Tire, Energy Release, um, Rick Haven Ridge with Wealth Partners, um, Race Incorporated, T Hurt Construction, Auto Tech. Anybody that's gave us a hand at the track or helped out in the shop, um, my family and my friends and my sponsors. So. All right, then uh, Ryan Jenkins, driver the number six throughout the area, picked up the track championship at IED Speedway. Four wins on the year, just a 25-point advantage over his uh, good friend Jacob Hobscheid, who Jacob really came on hot right there in the uh, middle to the end of the year. Yeah, he got his new car out, and he's really good. And, um, yeah. And we had, uh, I think we got behind the same time he got ahead. So Does that was... make you a little nervous going into next year? How fast he was? No, not really. With that, okay. <laughs> All right, guys, that's going to do it for us. We're going to take a break. If you missed any part of today's interview, make sure you listen online when we publish it on YouTube. And a uh, big thank you to Ryan Jenkins Racing for joining us on the front stretch. We're going to take a break. We'll be back. As summer winds wind down, those chilly nights at the racetrack are just around the turn. Stay warm while looking good, cheering on your favorite driver with Carhartt from Red Oak Fabrication. Since 1889, Carhartt has proven their mettle from the trenches of World War I to the toughest job sites today. Browse the large selection at the Red Oak Fabrication's Carhartt store and get $5 off pants until September 29th. RedOakFabrication.com slash Carhartt or at the corner of North 3rd and East Grimes in Red Oak. Every race car driver has run into the same problem. It's well past normal parts store closing hours, but you need that one to finish your car. The guys who brought you white knuckle racing by the river bring you Joe's Karting Racing Parts and Tire Store. Open until 10 p.m. Monday to Thursday and open until 11 p.m. on Friday and Saturday. A parts store that fits your after-hours schedule and you can turn a few laps at Joe's Karting while you're waiting for your part to get pulled from their warehouse. Joe'sCarting.com for more information. It's checkers or wreckers as we enter turn four on the front stretch presented by Joe's Carting and Council Bluffs. Just about ready to wrap this baby up. I want to say a big thank you to Quaker Steak and Lube, the official watering hole of the front stretch. Uh, they uh, always support us very handsomely with uh, prizes and a place to come and hang out on Tuesday nights when we do our on-site locations. If you want to watch any MAV TV, it is on the screens at Quaker Steak and Lube all throughout the week, but today obviously going to be all football all the time. And the great thing about Quaker Steak and Lube, great food prices, great menu, and uh, some pretty nice, delicious beers available for you while you watch your games. Quaker Steak and Lube, Council Bluffs. You can find them on Facebook for the latest news and information, which they'll be having Christmas with Santa coming up here in just a couple of weeks. Yeah, I don't remember the specific date on that, but I do know they got that scheduled already. And, uh, of course, they've always got the big screens with the football on. And so if you're sitting at home with one TV screen, you can go there and watch like six games at the same time with your head on a swivel. I want to say a big thank you once again to Quaker Steak and Lube for supporting the front stretch as they have done for so, so many years. Well, Dirk, we've kind of talked about it a little bit. It was no surprise that Jimmy Johnson announced his retirement. We just didn't really know exactly when his retirement was going to come. Like three years too late? Right. And it's, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's a little bit different that Allied, who's the primary sponsor who took over for Lowe's, has a contract with Hendrick Motorsports through the, I believe, through the 2023 season, but that the driver opted to not fulfill that entire contract. Because, you know, a lot of times these sponsor and drivers go hand in hand. A lot of times they do, but I'm thinking here they probably don't. I yeah. mean, my guess is it was probably, Ally was probably informed that Jimmy Johnson 
you know, he didn't make this decision overnight. No, no, no. You know, he, he didn't go home and say, heads, I retire, tails, yeah. you know, I keep driving. <laughs> he, he said that he'd actually been thinking about it for about six months, and it was about the Kansas race weekend that he started, he really kind of started to commit to it and act like, yes, this is a deal, I'm actually retiring, and it didn't affect him. He felt fine with it, and that's when he knew it was time to retire. Yeah, so I, I'm sure in the negotiation they had with Ally that that was probably, that was probably mentioned. You know, Hendricks is a, b- a big organization, been around for 30 years, you know, had a few other driver changes recently. The key to me is going to be who are they going to bring in to fill that seat and make Ally happy. Yeah. You know, um, the first couple names that come out are guys that are already signed with other teams. Like Kyle Larson was the one that everybody popped out. Mm-hmm. But I think anassi has got him wrapped up pretty tight. And he's allowed to go run other races, which Hendrick drivers are not. So, yeah. you know, he'd have to have that stipulation if he was going to move over. And look at Hendrick's recent history. He's lost Gordon. He's lost Earnhardt, and he brought young drivers in yeah. to fill these spots. I mean, Chase Elliott was going to come in and and be somewhere big no matter what, and, you know, with his dad in the sport like he was. So, you know, him coming onto the team. I see them signing a Ross Chastain. Mm. I see them signing possibly, uh, oh, what's uh, Noah? Noah Gregson. Gregson. Mm-hmm. Possibly, um, I see them going that route. Maybe Chase Briscoe. Yeah, but you got to look at Junior Motorsports. In the, you got yeah, <laughs> you got to look at Junior Motorsports in the Xfinity series. That's obviously going to be a feeder series for them. But when you're Hendrick Motorsports and you come a call in, you take that phone call. If you're Kyle Larson, you take the phone call out of respect. You listen to what they have to offer you, and maybe it's a good deal, and you got to entertain it. Me, personally, as a fan, I want Kyle Larson over at Stuart Haas Racing. I think that's well, his best opportunity su- to succeed and to continue to be able to race sprint cars and do the extra races other than just the Cup Series. Yeah, yeah, that's that's big for Kyle, and he's told us that and was very appreciative when he was on the podium at Knoxville mm-hmm. for letting Chip, you know, or for having Chip let him come race. So that is big for him. He's not going to go sign a contract somewhere where he can't race his sprint cars. He just won a couple races here in the last couple of weeks with uh, uh, USAC midget races somewhere. I don't remember if they were in California or where they were at, but he yeah. won two races somewhere. So he's not going to give that up. You know, Penske drivers can't go drive anywhere. You know, Brad Kozlowski's told me that to my face. You know, no, mm-hmm. we're not allowed to go drive anywhere. He goes, I can't drive anything that I don't own or Roger owns. That's why he could drive his trucks, but he couldn't go drive late models or anything yeah. anywhere. These guys all love to race. They would race right. every darn day if they mm-hmm. could, you know. so Coming coming back to Jimmy Johnson's career and, and what he's accomplished, I mean, I think he's going to go down as probably one of the best all time, and he's going to be in the argument of Richard Petty and Dale Earnhardt, obviously because those three Three guys are now tied for the most all-time series championships in the National Grand Touring Series for NASCAR, known as Winston, uh, Nextel, Sprint, now Monster Energy. The Cup Series. Mm-hmm. The Cup Series. And that's the one part that you've got to put that in there because there's guys, other guys with seven or more titles, even one locally. Steve kaziski has got seven right. titles. Mm-hmm. So you, you don't say NASCAR titles, say Cup titles, whatever right. the Cup the, happens to be this year, Winston, Nextel, whatever. Right. Uh, just say Cup Series, and, and you, you hit that on the head. But where you're still going to get the arguments, and they'll happen forever and ever, mm-hmm. is the Johnson never won a championship with Earnhardt or Petty, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You saw a bunch of memes come out on Facebook here in the last couple of weeks between Earnhardt and Kyle Busch, you know, and uh, – Kyle Busch has got two titles. Jimmy Johnson's got seven. So as far as national titles are on a different level, even though Kyle Busch is still one heck of a driver. Yeah, yeah. And Kyle Busch still has 10 years to even think about. And he's going to – I think he's going to blow past Jimmy Johnson. He's going to be the next driver that gets 100 wins at Cup. Do you think he'll get more championships than seven? That's going to take five championships in the next 10 years. Yeah. And with the format now – I don't think he can do that. It's it's much, I don't want to say tougher, but I think a little bit more luck comes involved. Because we've seen guys that have been able to weather storms. I'd be curious to go back, you know, that 2011 run with Tony Stewart when he won five races. Well, that answers my question. He would have made it into, into the championship round automatically because he'd have won in every round. And he'd well, have qualified into the next one. But he had bad races, those races he didn't win. Well, you'd have to go back and look because maybe he didn't win in every round. 
I don't know. I can't well, say he, that. He for won a fact. half the races in the tent, so he'd have won in every round. If you won the first three races and then won, you know, I, he probably did. Yeah, but I don't know that for a fact. So yeah, I, I can't remember the exact. But anyway, we're getting a little bit off key right. here. But I mean, you look at Jimmy and and you know, there's obviously going to be the detractors and say, well, Jimmy wouldn't have been Jimmy without Chad. And, and, and that's probably true. And that's a good argument. You can't say, but you know. Would uh, Richard Petty have been Richard Petty without Dale Inman? Right. Or Maurice Petty? And, and go into other sports. Would would would, uh, would Tom Brady be where he's at without Bill Belichick? Right. Both incredibly talented. Chad Knauss was obviously one of the best at, he, he carried on the tradition that Ray Everham started where they would find that gray area that NASCAR would, would stress about so much. And they would find ways to bend the rules. And occasionally they would get busted. Quite frankly, what winning team hasn't pushed the envelope hmm. and Did never I just gotten say Brady caught? and Belichick? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you 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 got to find those areas. That's that's kind of one of the epitomes about racing. And quite frankly, it's funny to me that so many people harp on the 48 team for being cheaters when you listen to some of these stories of the boys back in the days and i mean for crying out loud richard petty ran the wrong tires on purpose one race he had a cheated up engine in another race richard I mean, petty's 200th win was with a uh, 380 cubic inch motor but that became the time when they started checking them before every race they yeah. never did that before they always checked them afterwards but back then they let you keep your race they find him his purse yeah so he ran the whole race and didn't make anything except the number 200 in his win total. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, when you talk about the cheating, I think it's an integral part to auto racing because it's kind of an American tradition to innovate. And <laughs> Sometimes when you innovate a little bit too much on these cars, you, you reach outside what you're supposed to be able to do. Well, I mean, outside the rule book a little bit. That's kind of where, you know, the whole history and the glory of NASCAR came from was from the rum runners back in the right. prohibition days. Right. Right. You know, and that's what you were doing is you were cheating the police. You were mm -hmm. cheating the revenuers, uh, whoever, however you could get the booze to where you could, you know, sell it. That's, yeah. that's what you did. And oh. Over 651 cup races in his uh, career, 19 years, he's won 83 times. Uh, and he'll he'll obviously have thirty more race or thirty six more races to that, uh, pr providing anything crazy. This was the one that kind of gets me a little bit, and has always kind of been one of the cautionary tales of bringing a driver up through the sport. He's raced ninety three times in the Xfinity series and only won once. Despite all of that, they still brought well, and he didn't race ninety three total times before he got moved up into Hendrick Motorsports, but. He didn't have a glaring run in the Xfinity series. He was not a champion. He, was, he wasn't he was anywhere close. I don't believe he'd even come close to winning a race. That first year at Hendrick Motorsports in the Cup Series was kind of a disastrous year for him. But keep in mind, he missed out on winning championships about, I think, three years out of five before he finally started rattling off championships. We could be talking about a guy who's won 10 championships. Had it not come down to just uh, minor mistakes throughout the season that he missed out and finished second in the in the standings yeah and uh but he still uh has the iconic crash at watkins oh Glen my gosh that is the heart that where is where he he <laughs> hit, you know nose first into the wall with you know at the end of the long straightaway uh -huh. and i mean he hit a ton i watched that race i saw that happen live and he climbs out of the car and jumps up on the tires and throws his hands up in the air like he just stuck a triple flip yeah. landing or yeah. something but uh, it's iconic. You see, every year they right. go to Watkins Glen, they show that and, video, and it's right there along with uh, David Rudiman's wreck at Pocono, where the end. Or no, not David Rudiman. It was uh, it was David uh, Rudiman's wreck was at Watkins Glen also. That was terrible going up through the S's. Yeah, but you're thinking of uh, Michael McDowell at Texas. No, I'm thinking of uh, I, or maybe it was. Um, well, their engine block landed. The engine landed on top of the berm because the, at the time there was like a hill. And then the wall, and then it was the racetrack. Was that? And I want to say it was, I thought it was Michael, maybe what, I thought it was. Elliot Sadler, I think, at Pocono. Maybe it was Sadler at Pocono, then that's what I'm thinking of. One. When he was in the Cup Series at the time. Yeah, there's been some really bad wrecks, but Jimmy Johnson, that one at Watkins Glen was scary, because until he climbed out of the car, you didn't know what you were going to get. Uh, but I, he's going to go down as one of the best. I've, we've all, any of us that are a fan of the sport have just hated him, because he made it look so easy sometimes, and and Chad gave him cars that made it so easy, but he was an incredibly talented driver. I, I started giving him props one of the years we went to Kansas, and I remember it was within the first 50 laps. He spun coming out of turn four, tagged to the back of the wall, 
pitted nine times, got back on the lead lap, and still finished within the top ten with a pretty damaged race car. And the fact that they were able to strategize and work on that car to where he lost only about a lap, was still able to get his lap back, was still... I mean, they just... They were the smartest team out there for a long time, and wow. and one of the fastest. That's the reason why he won five straight. With the new with the new rules, though, he might not even been able to continue that race. Mm-hmm. You know, now the damage car been, policy. Yep, he yeah. might have been in the garage now, but yep. uh, he was able to, and he made the best of it. I honestly don't think he's got the pure talent that Kyle Busch does, or maybe Kyle Larson. Yeah, you see those guys make saves on cars yeah. that are just out of this world. Yeah, but Jimmy Johnson never put himself in the position to have yeah. to make that save. He was a very, very smart racer. Very and, smooth. And, and I think I think that frustrated a lot of fans and frustrated NASCAR in a, in a, as a whole because he, I think he was one of the first ones that really kind of exploited. You may have a second-place car, and, and, and it's going to be a dogfight to get that second place. So let's finish fourth. We'll retool. We'll come back next weekend and work on the win. But we've only got a second place car, and if we if we have to finish fourth, we have to finish fourth. That's better points than pushing for it and wrecking and finishing thirty fifth. And especially back in the day, I mean, we're talking four or five years ago before the the uh, the current stage system, because you could run second all day long and finish thirty fifth, and you didn't get squat for points. You didn't get any stage points. You didn't get any bonus play. You got nothing. It was it was a rough day to to work all that that long and get barely anything out of it yeah but it like i said his whatever they were doing and whatever they were trying to do they did yeah you know uh you just can't argue with the results Mm -hmm. he won uh 86 races is that what it was 80 something 83 83 races so he basically won one out of every eight times he's been on the track Mm -hmm. and i maybe richard petty can match that but i know dale earnhardt can't dale earnhardt only had uh 70s 76 wins yeah. i think yeah, yeah. I, i'll have to look it up exactly but he feels like he's in the 70s i know gordon, I gordon's got like 85 wins so he's he's about fourth or fifth on the all-time yeah, wins. Oh, yeah he went past uh dale earnhardt about three years left in his career so he had a couple good years right towards the end he didn't uh jeff didn't hang around and have uh i think where's jimmy johnson at now 80 races or something without a win maybe 90 he's well mm. over two years I don't know. Uh, let's see. His last win was Would have been Dover in 17? seventeen. Yeah, and he came from last, and I picked him in the contest. Hey, that there day. you go. <laughs> All right. So, big question leading into twenty twenty: Does he get a win? Does he fight for the championship, or do we continue to see him struggle late in his career? I'm thinking you continue to see him struggle. That's the closest he's been to a win in the last couple of years was the road court, the roval a year ago. Yeah, you know he was. Within 100 yards of a win there. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe he can do that again. Um, I just think that was his talent with Hendrick's talent, having them up towards the front there. Yeah. So, um, But he really hasn't done much but sniff a mile and a half track. When you know? he used to be so good. I mean, he was lights out at, well, even at Martinsville, he was lights out for several years. Texas, uh, obviously Charlotte was his home for, <laughs> he, you went there and you raced for second when it came to Jimmy Johnson. Right. You know, he was just so good at so many tracks. And now, boy, the, it's, it's almost heartbreaking to see him back there in 15th and 20th and, and struggling all day long. The cars in the last couple of years, um, let's just say it's teaching the dog new tricks thing yeah. for him. Yeah. He's been around for so long driving the old style cars. I think that's why he decided to go ahead and take one more year because then they're going to change the cars again. And mm-hmm. he's like, I'm not going through that again. Right. And yeah. it's, it's smart. maybe that I was mean, it. Cause it's, it, it's a lot of work to learn these new cars and, and you know, tongue could be hanging out a little bit. You know what? I had my days. Well, and as, as we've discussed before, and as I talked to Danny Stockman, uh, Austin Dillon's crew chief at Kansas back in October, that uh, these new cars, they are changing the wheels and tire combination. Mm-hmm. That's going to happen. That's mm-hmm. not a thought. That mm-hmm. is going to happen. Mm-hmm. So the one variable they have been able to keep from car change to car change <laughs> to car change is gone. Yeah, and I wonder, I mean, what if we get halfway through next season and all of a sudden he's winning? Does he turn around and go, you know what, guys, never mind. I'm no. coming back. <laughs> no, he's not. He won't. I don't think he'll do that. I don't think he'd do that if he was the champion. I think he'd go out on the high note and be done with it because he's, you know, I mean, Mark Martin kind of did that. You know, he took mm-hmm. a victory lap and 
and you know got a couple Harley Davidsons given to him here and there and and some stuff like that and then said eh, maybe I'm going to race a little bit over here for junior you know for DEI <laughs> yeah. and you know he kind of bounced around a little bit and did a little fill in and that's fine I you know if if he does that I won't take it away from him I wouldn't take it away from Mark Martin if he came back and and raced again somewhere but uh, uh I don't think Jimmy Johnson's going to do that I think he's yeah. going to fade off into the sunset <clears throat> and uh you know, maybe go a Tony Stewart route and uh, become a team owner or something or buy into Hendrick Motorsports and because uh, they've already said when Hendrick's gone, Jeff Gordon's going to run it. Maybe he's going to want to hire Jimmy up there, driver coach. I want to say a big thank you to Infield Jen for joining us in turn number one, Tom Myers for sitting down with us in turn number two, and I-80 Speedway AMOD Track Champion Ryan Jenkins in turn number three. Boy, it's been a pretty star-studded show, and we're just getting started. More interviews to come. Jared Weston's going to join us in the next couple of weeks. Dennis Parker, the president for... The Nebraska 360s, Jack Dover, Jason Martin, John Clabundy, who are a couple of the drivers on that series. Plus, we're going to talk to Melinda Russell, who is um, the entrepreneur lady that started the International Women's Motorsports Association. Yes, that's. thank you very much for that. Uh, i got way too much going on right now. I apologize. So many interviews still to come. So little time. And God, we're already into December. Um, this is never going to get old for me. We're just a couple of weeks away from Christmas. Hope everyone has a safe holidays. By the way, we talked about it last weekend that we were going to have uh, Ben Shelton on the show to talk about the Gateway Dirt Nationals coming up in St. Louis. Ben, with the uh, Thanksgiving weekend had a, a pretty hectic week so he wanted to hold off for another week or two so we're going to try to get ben on in the next week to two weeks yeah we've got um when is that show the weekend of the 19th i yep. think yep so we've got a couple weeks before that race actually happens and uh i was reading on uh on ben's facebook page he uh they brought another partner into his msr mafia mm -hmm. somebody that evidently he's worked with before and stuff and they're growing leaps and bounds and uh he's still the shortest guy of the trio but uh, I, his oh, hair yeah. gets him up there he's going to be the shortest guy of the trio no matter who he hires <laughs> Vern troyer could get hired i think ben would still be the shortest man in the tr in the <clears throat> quadruplet but anyways uh so we'll get ben on in the next couple of weeks if you missed any part of today's show you can always catch it on youtube coming up in just a little bit that's provided i remember to send it to the internet company because uh, it's a <laughs> Sorry about that last week. I'll try to get better about that again. But uh, you can always find it on YouTube.com slash Joe's Carding slash videos or just go to YouTube.com, search the front stretch in your favorite driver's name, and more than likely that interview is going to pop up. want to say a big thank you to everybody that joined us. For Dirk Houston, I'm Dan Taylor. We'll be back next weekend to do it all over again. This has been the Front Stretch presented by Joe's Carding on AM 590. The official watering hole of the front stretch has you covered any day of the week with the best wings, great burgers, and amazing steaks. Each weekday from 4 to 6 is Happy Hour, featuring dollar off draft and well drinks plus $4 Luberitas. Mondays are Kids Night. Tuesdays are All You Can Eat Wings for $12.95. And the Lube even delivers to the Council Bluffs area. Like Quaker Steak and Lube Council Bluffs on Facebook for a full list of weekly events. Get to Quaker Steak and Lube. Mid-America Drive, Council Bluffs. Hey, look at that. You're sitting on your couch playing Halo, Madden, or NASCAR while your friends are at Joe's Karting. Each lap is an adrenaline-filled, heart-pumping, white-knuckle experience that you can only get at the Metro's largest indoor karting track. Eco-friendly Honda engines rip you around their professionally designed road course at breakneck speeds. Can you reach the 14-second lap bracket? There's only one way to find out. Put the controller down and get to Joe's Karting, 23rd Avenue in Council Bluffs next to Quaker Steak and Lube. This has been the Front Stretch Radio Show, presented by Joe's Carding and Council Bluffs. To contact Dan or Dirk, find them on Facebook at The Front Stretch or email them at frontstretch590 at gmail.com. If you missed any part of today's show or want to hear a previous show, subscribe to the Joe's Carding YouTube page where you can find almost every Front Stretch show.